Dr. Charles Steinberg, received as, he served as Executive Vice President, Public Affairs for the Red Sox. Up until 2007, he's returning, and has returned to the club as Senior Advisor to Team President Larry Lacchino. Uh Charles, good morning. Good morning to you. How are you doing this morning? Good. How are you doing, doing Doc? Good. And we understand you got some events coming up, and we'll, of course, uh, get to those. Just wanted to hit you with some baseball questions. Of course, uh, you know, Stephen Drew sort of hanging out there in the uh, in the balance, and uh, Scott Boris says you guys are still in the running. What's the uh, what's the deal with Stephen Drew? Are you gonna he's going to be in a Red Sox uniform this season? Well, I'm I'm absolutely certain that I have no idea. <laughs> um, when we when we have our, our uh, staff meetings at the Red Sox, uh, Ben Charrington will come, and the rest of us are like little kids hanging on every word that he says. <laughs> Is that right? Uh, we 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 leave it to him, and uh, um, and he navigates that process. Um, and uh, so much of what we think is going to happen is what we read about. Um, but we usually hear that something happened, not something's going to happen. Ah. I think part of that is a practice that Larry Lucchino has taught, because you uh, so much can happen till something happens. You know, you think you have a deal, and another club swoops in. So, uh, so we leave we leave those machinations to Ben, and uh, works out pretty well that way. Yeah. Plus, they probably you know keeping the secret from you guys is uh, probably helps out. Otherwise, you might leak it to guys like us. <laughs> right. Exactly. <laughs> I, I tell you, but the it's it's not something you can actually know until it happens. Right. You, you can say, well, let's do this. Let's try this. Um, here's what you do know: you know that we had a great talent on the left side uh, last year with. Will Middlebrooks and Xander Bogarts and Stephen Drew, and uh, now it's a you know a general manager's task and not a bad one to say how do we sift that all out. Um, you know, it's, it's much better than having one talented player on the left side. It's better than three. Uh, Dr. Charles Steinberg, executive with the uh, Boston Red Sox. Uh, Jacoby Ellsbury uh, goes to the Yankees. What is the reaction like inside the club when a player of that magnitude goes from the Red Sox to the Yankees specifically? Well, I think that it, it varies during what era of, of Red Sox history it is. I think in this case, uh, everybody uh, loved and respected and appreciated Jacoby. He's a, a remarkable talent. Um, but um, the, I, I don't think that you have any of the anguish or hand-wringing or, or outrage at all uh, in our organization that he went to gasp, you know, the Yankees. Um, you know, it's... Um, it does put a log on the, the fire of the rivalry, and you know, there'll be spirited play when he comes to town. But I think that part of it is that it may not have been uh, uh, such a, a surprise, um, particularly because of the job that Ben Charrington, uh, Mike Hazen, Brian O'Halloran have done uh, filling up our farm system with some guys who um, Ben has said he'd be very comfortable uh, succeeding Jacoby. Now, whether that's Jackie Bradley Jr., or whether you move guys around, or whether you still make another acquisition, uh, we're going to see. But um, but there there was not the, the sense of um, devastation uh, or or feeling wronged. Uh, you know, Jacoby uh, uh, played you know beautifully, helped us win two world championships. We wish him well. Um, you know, when there's a uh, a reunion of the 2013 team, was 2007 years from now. I would trust he would come back and, and get a good ovation. Mike Napoli's uh, post-World <laughs> Series celebration is now uh, a thing of legend, and as a Yankee fan, I've never uttered the words, that's my hero about a Boston Red Sox player before, but uh, it, it was well-documented, Mike Napoli's partying oh, yeah. after the World Series, shirtless, uh, bearded, and uh, you know, all over the, the city of Boston. What was the reaction with, uh, within the organization? Uh, glee. Uh, that was <laughs> terrific. <laughs> you know, uh, these are, are joyful guys who, to me, it was really fun this year to watch guys be unafraid to show their love of baseball and their connection with the fans. Uh, these, you know, you, you hear stories. You're, you're a Yankees fan, you know, New York. You hear these stories about, ah, oh, back in the good old days at, at Ebbets Field in Brooklyn, the ball players actually lived in the neighborhood and they, they went to the grocery store and they went to the, you know, the, the same, uh, uh, the same dry cleaners. Well, we have that. We have guys who live right around Fenway Park, uh, who will walk to the ball game, 
and um, and if they and if one of them um, is is so popular that he can go with a long beard and no shirt down the street and and uh, and fans are embracing him. Um, Nice going. <laughs> yeah, no, I, I completely agree. It's with old you. school, and you've got a yeah, yeah, it is old it school. Is. That's exactly right. And you've got a forgiving city when it comes to those things, for those those types of things, the party. Well, they actually embrace it in, yeah. in that in that you you can go to a restaurant and there's you know right in your neighborhood there you know there's one of your ball players. They're, right. they're very accessible. Dr. Charles Steinberg joining the show, an executive with the Boston Red Sox. Home plate collisions uh, banned by the competition committee for next year. Is that true? And what do you think about it? Well, I was I was reading uh, the the article about it this morning. It really surprises me, um, but I, I can't go against what, what is it? Ten current managers or former catchers, but um, it, it does surprise me because it has seemed like such a part of the game, um, and uh, it sounds like something that, that will be studied. I think there's a uh, there are a number of um, of milestones that you have to pass in order for it to be implemented, but. Um, you know, when, I'll tell you this. When I worked for the commissioner of baseball, I worked uh, with him in um, in 2010 and 11. Uh, that um, continued a relationship that started with Joe Torrey when I went to the Dodgers in 2008 and 9. I worked with Joe for four years, and I put great faith in in uh, his influence and wisdom and judgment as a catcher, as a manager, as now a Hall of Famer. Um, he he's first class, and uh, I think you have the right minds participating. Bruce Bochy, we worked with um, Larry Lucchino and I uh, when we were at the San Diego Padres for seven years. Um, uh, you know, a low key personality, a great manager, and a former catcher. So I think you're you're hearing from the right guys, and um, one you know, in my case, uh, one who got two hits in two years of little league. I don't have much standing in, in the in the argument. But let's uh, let's see what they do. You, but you've got you got great catchers who are now influential in the game uh, talking about it, and let's see what they come up with. Bitter Yankee fans like myself uh, spent weeks after you guys won the World Series, uh, you know, questioning David Ortiz and uh, you know how he performs the way he does uh, at this age and the steroid rumors. W- what do you all think about that inside the organization? Well, we know that there will be you know, wonder and speculation. Again, it's it's part of the times in, in which we live. We we know that that David's just been great. You know, he has, he has taken care of himself. He's worked out. Um, you know, in in, uh, in in with great effort in in recent years. You know, there was a time while I was gone, that there was speculation. Oh, he's lost it. Um, but then I think he slimmed down an awful lot. Um, but there's never been a question that he has the talent to put the bat on the ball and to to um, uh, if you it is said in, by many hitting uh, coaches and hitting instructors that hitting can uh, is, is very much a learned art, especially as you learn uh, the opposing uh, pitchers and their styles. And David is a real student of the opposing pitcher. And when he sees what he's looking for, he's got that talent. Uh, you're, you're not seeing um, this same period in which guys are hitting 50 and 60 home runs anymore. You know that that's different. But uh, but David has always had the ability to hit the ball well, and uh, that's a talent and a, an art that, that he's crafted. Dr. Charles Steinberg of the uh, Boston Red Sox. Can you guys repeat this year? Well. You know, you know, it's just too, it's just too hard to believe that it, there's some path laid before you. Um, what, what we have seen in, with gratification this year is that there's no carryover from the previous year. <laughs> 2013 was nothing like 2012. Right. Now, that was great. But now you go to 2014, you have to remember the same adage. There's no carryover. Look at what your Yankees are doing. They are building furiously. Take a look. Baltimore is still strong. They, My Yankees are building. They raise within a whisker. My Yankees are building a pyramid of old guys is what they're doing. <laughs> well, you could have said something similar uh, when we were acquiring veteran free agents this past offseason. But what was it that, that they had in common? We acquired 
uh, free agents who had postseason experience, who were practiced in the art of winning. Um, so we, we have only respect for the, the foes in the East, especially the, the big one and the Big Apple. Charles, we also wanted to get you on, talk a little bit about uh, the World Series trophy activities going on at Fenway uh, this week. So if you could speak of those, that'd be great. Well, tickets go on sale this Saturday morning at 10 o'clock on RedSox.com, and we celebrate um, that momentous achievement by, uh, by calling it Christmas at Fenway at Fenway Park. But uh, you don't have to come to, to Fenway for it. You can just go online. It's your first chance to get uh, the, the Sox packs, those four-pack yeah. tickets, as well as uh, April and May weeknight games. But um, uh, the trophy will be at Fenway Park, but we're actually taking it out and about uh, throughout as many towns and communities as we can. And uh, those who would like the trophy uh, to come visit them, if you're you know, anywhere in New England, you know, certainly uh, throughout Connecticut we have some uh, Connecticut uh, plans uh, in pencil right now. Um, you're, you know, we we want to bring the, uh, the 2013 or all three, uh, four, seven, and thirteen. So we're we're trying to uh, make sure it gets um, uh, out there, you know, to schools and to libraries and to to you know, places of community convocation, um, and um, you know, it's a way to keep the story of 2013 going. Um, and, and, you know, a, a shameless promotional effort to uh, give the opportunity to remind people that tickets are going on sale this Saturday. Um, we're also going to be announcing a little bit later today that we're going to do something new at Fenway uh, on New Year's Eve. We're going to have, uh, for those who want to ice skate, families and children from 5 till 10 p.m., uh, you can come up and spend New Year's Eve in Boston and ice skate at Fenway Park. Uh, so the, all of that will be at RedSox.com, too. And there's, there's a lot of hockey going on uh, with uh, uh, Frozen Fenway, uh, presented by City in, um, in January. So we're keeping Fenway very busy. We're, we're taking the cold weather, converting it to ice opportunities, um, but uh, really opportunities to, to talk, though, about uh, baseball. Uh, will Middlebrooks has been in town all uh, winter. Uh, Craig Breslow is in town uh, these days, and we'll be at, um, at Fenway on Saturday. And um, uh, a, a number of our ball players and coaches and uh, former players will be there to create a bit of a, a Christmas festival. Um, but um, it's for everybody, no matter where you are, to be able to go on RedSox.com on uh, Saturday starting at 10 a.m. And, and get your tickets. Last uh, question for you, uh, Charles. Is there any truth to the rumor that uh, part of these activities will include a bare-chested Mike Napoli <laughs> raising the trophy <laughs> over his head go. and screaming through the streets? Good question. You know, many people only wish for that. Right. Know, I think that's on their, their Santa Christmas list. List. I'm not not sure that that's going to happen. Okay, he, I just wanted to know. Great question, though. Yeah, he may be in warmer climes. <laughs> Senior advisor to uh, the Red Sox uh, president, Dr. Charles Steinberg. Thank you for joining we us. We really appreciate the time, Doc. Great. Sure, my pleasure. Good to talk to you. All right. Good to talk to you. Bye-bye.